Okay, so we created a basic HTML5 template, and then we use that template to fill in some content using heading tags, paragraph tags, and a horizontal rule. But by this time, you're probably thinking this page looks pretty boring and not very colorful or very interesting. So in order to format our documents, we use what's called cascading style sheets. And we'll be getting into some more in-depth uses of style sheets, but today we'll look at just a beginner introduction to it so that you can start to get a feel for how we can lay out or design your web pages. So I'm going to go into the code for my HTML document. And the style information for this example is going to go into the head section. If you think about it, the, the browser reads in this page from top to bottom and it starts at the very beginning and it runs all the way through. So anything that we want our browser to know ahead of time about formatting the layout of the page will typically go in the head section so that it will be able to read in the layout information and the style information so that when it gets to our heading one tag or our paragraph tags it knows how to deal with it. So what we do is we use one technique of implementing a style sheet is in the head section to use style tags. So we say style type equals text slash CSS. That's the opening style tag and so we have to have a closing style tag. Now make sure that you do include the closing style tag. So now inside the style tags, we use CSS standard statements. We don't put HTML inside these style tags. So the style tags themselves are HTML, but the content of what goes in there is purely CSS. And in CSS, we use the name of the tag that we want to format, but we don't use the greater than or less than symbols. So for example, if I wanted to format the heading one tag, I would use H1 to say a heading one tag should contain this format. And then we use curly braces to define our CSS rule. So what goes inside these braces are called rules. So let's just say we wanted to change the color of the font. So we'll say color and we use a colon with a space and then we can use there are some names of colors, and then we can use hexadecimal numbers for colors. So let me show you each technique. First of all, there's just the basic name colors. There are 16 different colors of names. So I'm going to put in aqua, and then I'm going to end that with a semicolon, and then a closing curly brace. So this is the rule for the heading one tag. So when it finds all heading one tags in my page, it's going to make the font color aqua. So if I save this and now I refresh it in my browser, we can see that the heading one has changed to aqua. Uh, let's go in and look and see what other colors we can include. So I'm going to go to my web browser and I'm going to go to a website called webmonkey.com. And on their website, they have a link somewhere, if the site may change, but on their site somewhere there's usually a link for color charts. And if you click to go there, you'll start to see a list of different colors with their hex numbers. And you'll also see on some of them the names of the colors that you could use to type in. Black, instead of typing in aqua here, I could type in black. And if I typed in blue, this is the shade of blue that I would get. And if I just typed in green, this is the shade of green I would get. So if you want to have consistent colors across different web browsers, I would recommend using the hex code color because not all browsers may recognize deep sky blue or dark cyan. So let's just say I wanted, let's do something that will show up on the video pretty well. So let's just pick one of these darker colors here. So CC6600. So I'm going to replace aqua with that value, save my file, and then I'm going to come back to my browser and I'm going to refresh. And now you can see that this has picked up that color that I selected. 
I can do a similar thing for uh, the heading two tag. I can say heading two and I could specify a color and I can come back to my color chart and maybe I want something a little bit darker than that one. So I can select that color, paste it in and close with my semicolon and my curly brace. So now if I refresh, I can come back here and there's my heading two. And notice that both heading two tags picked up that same color. So everywhere in my document where there's a heading two, it picked up that color. Okay, let's look at some other formatting. Now some things that we can do to control the entire page, we would use the body tag. If you think of it in terms of we have the opening body and then at the end we have the closing body tag, if we use this for our style, then we can affect everything that's inside the body tag. So up here I'm going to type in the name of the tag. Again, I'm not using the greater than or less than symbol. Opening curly brace. And let's say we can, if we want to put in a background color, I'll say background color. And I'll use a hex number from my color chart. I haven't looked at these ahead of time, so. I'm not really color coordinating everything for one look right now. So I'll save and then switch back to my web page and refresh. And now I have my background color. A little bit more for styling our body tag. Let's change the margins. And when you read through this, this will make sense. So I'm going to say margin left and we'll say 20% and margin right 20%. So what we'll do is take 20% of the left side of the page and 20% of the right and leave those as margins. So that means 40% of the whole page width is gonna be margins. So that leaves us 60% inside for our content. And this, don't forget this T in there, otherwise it wouldn't work too well. And while we're at it, let's change the font. So we can say font family and I'm just going to start off basic with what's called a sans serif, which means it's not going to have these little lines across the top, these little serifs. So I'm going to save my index page and I'm going to switch back and refresh it in my browser. And you can see now we have a whole new look. It went into giving us some spacing on the side. So it adds a little more visual interest than being flush left over to the right margin. And now we have a sans serif font. It doesn't have those little serifs or those little extenders on our font. One quick other thing, we can format our paragraph text and we can do that all at once everywhere it finds the P tag in our page. It's going to use this formatting. And we'll show you a little bit about line spacing. Now in order to open up this space or adjust the amount of space in between the lines in here, we use the line height property. And I'm going to put in 100% just to start out with. And you can test and see what that does. If I refresh, see it got closer together. So it's like 100% is, doesn't leave any spacing between. And you can find some places in here where we have an extender like this Y that's hitting, almost hitting the L for the ascender in that letter. So if we wanted more spacing in between, let's say 120 percent. That's going to open it up a little bit. So I'll refresh. Okay, now we have a bit more open space. And so the more that you add in here, the wider that space will get. So we'll go even bigger. Now, sometimes too much space in there can make it hard to read. And that depends on the content and how dense the text is. So you can decide on what would be what would look good. Now if you get to something less than 100% then you're really going to lose readability in your text. And it looks like something didn't format right when the browser displayed it. I'm going to put this back to about 120%. I thought that looked nice that way. So as we go on through other tutorials, we'll be showing other examples of using CSS for style formatting. But this is the basics. And if something doesn't work right, some things to check. These are some common things that tend to go wrong. As I mentioned, one is you forget to put in the closing style tag. Other mistakes that are common, you forgot 
to put in the opening quote and the closing quote here. So make sure you have both double quotes. Make sure that each of these have an opening and closing curly brace before moving to the next rule. These are colons, right? not semicolons, and at the end of each style rule, you're going to put in a semicolon, and that says, okay, that's the end of this particular property and value, and then that semicolon starts the next property and value with a semicolon. So they're separating the property and value combinations. Another thing is, you know, there should be a space after the, the colon. And if you have something that has a hyphen in it, make sure that you include the hyphen. Without it, things won't work right. So if I took the hyphen out of there and I put in a space, and then I come back here and I refresh, it doesn't know how to interpret that color. And then sometimes that can also have an effect on other things. So it can have like a domino effect and other style information may not show up right. And as I said, if you don't include the style, the closing style tag, and this happens, it kind of like, oh, everything looks like it just disappeared. So you didn't lose anything. It's just it got this far and then you kind of got lost because it didn't know how to deal with the style information. So that's a brief introduction into getting started with formatting your web pages and using CSS.